up, boys and girls. It's your favorite hearty host of horror, Benjamin Dutill, with the Horror Heathen YouTube channel and the South Jersey Horror Podcast. Today, I have two very special and honored guests on my show, Mr. Kyle Parrott and Manny McGraw, which I am super honored and super excited to have both of you on my show because we're here today, today to talk about your movie, Robbie Ain't Right No More. And after seeing the trailer, it looks fantastic. The transitions look amazing. The filming looks amazing. And the angles are awesome. And just by watching the trailer, I cannot wait to see this movie. Because it's all about someone coming back from war and someone who's struggling with PTSD. And I want to know more. Because being a combat vet myself and struggling with PTSD as well, I know how it is sometimes. So... First of all, I'd like to introduce Mr. Kyle Parrott, who is the director of this film. Sir, if you could tell us a little bit about yourself and what this movie is about. Okay. So, my name is Kyle Parrott. <clears throat> I served in the Marines from 2007 to 2011 and have been in the film industry pretty much since the day I got out. Um, I've worked as a lighting technician for the last 10 years, and during my off time, I tend to blow all my money on a uh, Indie film. <laughs> well, I am a huge supporter of independent films. I've donated so much money and contributed so much money to independent films because that's where the film industry is at now. So, yeah, um, I've been that's all I've been watching lately. The past I don't know six or seven weeks is all independent movies now. Trying to get actors and directors on my show. So. To me, I think that's the new era and the new generation of filming is independent movies because they are doing so well right now. Okay, I would also like to introduce Madeline McGraw. How are you doing? How are you doing? I'm doing great. How about you? I'm doing fantastic. So what is your role in this movie, if you don't mind? Um, I, I play Sarah, Robbie's little sister. Okay. <laughs> it can you, can you, yeah, is there any way you can, you can elaborate more on that or is it all? Yeah. Um, so Sarah knows that something's wrong with Robbie, obviously, but she cares about him so much and she wants to do whatever she can to help him or at least bring out the better side of him or the original Robbie. Okay. So Robbie coming back from war, um, obviously he's struggling with PTSD. Um, the trailer doesn't really say much unless that was done purposely. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, to kind of explain what's going on with Robbie. Yeah, I wanted to tell the story of a kid who goes off to war. He comes back, <clears throat> and there's clearly something different about him, and there's clearly something very disturbing going on. Um, and I wanted to see what that does to the family. Yeah, because that's the, the gist of it. <laughs> yeah, because he has the evil smile at the end of the trailer, and I'm like, oh my god, this movie is gonna be so good. <laughs> <laughs> so, is it any more you can you can elaborate on the movie, how it was filmed, where it was filmed, or is this all hush hush? Um, no, no, you know, we didn't talk about any NDAs or anything. So, uh, <clears throat> we shot for three days technically three nights in Charleston, South Carolina, uh, a couple days right before Christmas. Uh, it happened to be the coldest days we had in, you know, in South Carolina that year. It was also Maddie's birthday, fell on the last night. Um, yeah. Well, happy belated birthday to you, Madeline. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It was so fun getting to celebrate it there. <laughs> so... I wish I, I wish I could watch the movie. I could ask more questions about this. What is the message you're trying to convey besides, you know, he comes back from the war and there's nothing right with him? Is there, apparently he's struggling with something. Yeah. Um, it's less of a message and more wanting to share just the general collective nightmare uh, that so many of us have. You know what I mean? I, exactly, uh, I do. Yes, and, uh, and I tried to tell it in a unique and weird, interesting way that I, I haven't seen it told before. So hopefully, you know, everyone else who sees it feels that way too. So, Madeline, you being the little sister, and during the filming of this movie, um, 
you said you, you noticed that something's not right with Robbie. Right. Um, is there a way you can describe, like, like is that body language? Is it his behavior? Definitely. I mean, I would say everything, but mainly his behavior, because his behavior has definitely changed from, I mean, you don't get to see it, but you can tell that the family knows something's wrong with him. And I feel like instead of giving him a hard time about it, like some of the family members are doing, especially Andy, um, she wants to really just help him with whatever he needs help with and do whatever she can to get the old Robbie back. I can totally relate to that because may I said me being a combat vet myself, it it's the transition coming back from war is not easy. I spent 15 months in Afghanistan in a straight combat zone is getting shot at every day. It was not fun. So I can, I'm glad that your PR reached out to me because I'm like, I could relate to this movie <laughs> so easily. So, yeah. <clears throat> and I'd like to say, I also wanted to capture like the funny and just kind of awkward moments that happen, uh, you know, to someone coming back from say 15 months overseas like that. And all of a sudden, like almost overnight, you're back in, you know, rural America around those people you grew up around and you're like, uh, who are these people? Uh, you know, exactly. You like, uh, exactly. Like, they always like this. Was, was I always? <laughs> like this? Uh, uh, I wanted to get as much of that as I could in a short. You know, obviously, there's a lot to pack into something with, with a runtime that a short film requires. But um, yeah, I feel like that's also like really cool about short films is that. Um, the way they're done, like sometimes they leave you wanting more, and that's definitely like what Robbie ain't right no more does. Exactly. So it's you say it take three days to film this movie, or did it take longer? Um, yeah, it was three days. Uh, yeah, the schedule was pretty packed, <laughs> but we we got it done. Well, that's Thanks. amazing, amazing Great. to get it done in three days like that. That's that means there's a lot of first takes, which is which is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say that. I usually get at least three. Um, I think it more has to do with having just a professional crew, you know, like most of these people are my friends that I've gotten to know over like a, a decade in the film business. And, you know, we've all grown and gotten better together. And, uh, you know, so a shoot like that is kind of like just friends hanging out and doing what they're, uh, they're best at. So what affects Robbie while he's deployed does he find something or is it just it's just the, the essence of war itself is what messes with his head um yeah that's what I want to that's what I don't want people to find out in this okay you know, short uh that's something I would definitely explore in the longer form version of that story yeah because so, I'd never make it <clears throat> I don't get specifically into PTSD you know I'm I just want to show that there's just something badly wrong with him. He's not the same as he was before he left. Uh, it's more about the idea of someone <clears throat> going somewhere very bad and bringing a piece of that back home into the into the family. I can guess. Uh, there's nothing I can relate to. It's just little little quips. When I got back, we landed back in the United States. I literally handed my weapon to someone else, got down on the ground, and kissed the ground because we were back on U.S. soil. <laughs> Yeah. It's so, like, we're back, baby. And so it was great. Yeah. So, yeah, I had a little bit different experience, but, you know, <clears throat> I wasn't on, you know, getting shot at every day on my deployment in Afghanistan. Uh, I was in Southern Hellman. You know, we were just mainly just actively looking for bombs in the dirt on every single patrol. We found a ton. But uh, I was uh, one of those people who didn't want to go home. <laughs> There yeah. was a small part of me that kind of that was a little hesitant to get back home too. Just saying, yeah. yes, I know. What branch? What branch were you in? I did two branches. I was in the Navy and the Army. So. Okay, so I was in the Marine Corps, and I think uh, they made our life so miserable stateside that once they just set us loose in another country, we we're like, oh god, this is just so much better. Freedom. <laughs> uh, they actually let you do your job, you know, and you know you're not just cleaning everything all day every day for no reason. Uh, but I thought my job was there. I was just a carpenter in your army. That's all I love is build houses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Madeline, you're the sister. You're you're like we like the supporting role in this movie. And how does it feel to be in that kind of, in that position, knowing that 
I'm, I'm kind of I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to ask this question. You're you're put in that position to where your your older brother comes back from war, and you have to deal with this. I mean, how did you prepare for that in the role mentally and stri- strategically? Well, you know, I really just I was so happy that I got to do something for Emmy. Um, she's the one who actually reached out to me about this film. Uh, I've known her for since I was six. I've known her since I was six years old. And she came to me with this script. She was like, oh, Kyle, he's writing this. um, He wrote this amazing script. And there's a role for you in there that we would love for you to play. um, But read it and then like get get back to me. And I read it and I thought it was so interesting. And I was like, of course, I would also do anything for Emmy. And get, then getting to work with Kyle was also amazing. And then getting to meet all these awesome people on the film. It was just such a great experience overall. Yes, I could. I, I don't think they could have picked anyone better for this role. I really don't. <laughs> Thank you so that's, much. Uh, <laughs> and that's Emmy Holmes, our producer, costume designer, and my fiance. Nice. So that's great. That, that's Keep it all together. It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um. So... I would like to ask more questions, but I haven't seen the movie, but I cannot wait to see it. When is it due to re- be released, or is that a secret? Um, I wouldn't say it's a secret, but we want to play as many film festivals as we can before putting it out online. And right now we're doing a little like mini fall run before doing an all out just run for next year. And we're our next festival we're playing at is Nightmares Film Festival in Columbus, Ohio. And then right after that is Film Quest in Provo, Utah. Okay. So congratulations to get your film submitted for that. That's that's a big deal. Um Thanks. from what I know, the independent movies are very hard to film because you know the but with the with the low budget you have. But yeah, but creating one and having one submitted into a film and have it produced and all that stuff. It's a huge achievement, in my opinion. And a lot of the general consensus doesn't know that. It's like independent filmmakers actually struggle a lot. And I try to put that out because I've been to many um, premieres for independent movies. And um, and I, I said, I realized like these people don't have that much resources, but yet they get the job done. And that's what matters. Yeah. And the, the audience is happy with it and they win awards. And I hope you get tons of awards for this movie. I really do. And both of you, I mean, everybody in the movie should deserve a reward. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, if they don't, if you if, if no one gets an award, tell them to come talk to me. I'll, I'll straighten them out. So, <laughs> all right, we'll send them your way. <laughs> <laughs> so, I wish that, like, I wish I had more questions, but I'd, like, I'm going to add the trailer into this interview. Um, I did download it, so I'm going to add it to after the awesome. interview so people can watch the trailer and. I'm hoping that it, it 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 grabs their attention because, like I said, the trailer looks amazing. Uh, did you shoot the trailer? Was that you who did that? Um, well, I directed the movie, so my friend and producing partner Owen Hamilton he uh, he DP'd it. So yeah, he shot that, um, and it was lit by you know everyone we've worked with over the years. So kudos on them because that trailer looks amazing. It does. Like village. <laughs> <laughs> So does it all take place in just that house alone, the entire movie? Um, it's it's all on one property. Yeah. Okay. You no, know, at a certain point we leave the house. That's where things take a turn. So traveling was not that much of a problem with the budget, which is good. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's just different clips from the uh, movie that I cut together. Well, like I said, I, the watching the trailer, I was blown away by the trailer. And when Amy reached out to me, she's like, "Hey, watch the trailer." And let me know what you think. I wrote back, this looks amazing. And I would love to have you two on my show because I, I can't wait to see. I'm stoked. I want to I see the premiere of this thing so bad. <laughs> so... <laughs> well, if you make your way to Columbus, uh, I think October 26th, that festival is a great one for horror fans. And we were just at one called Telluride Horror Show. And I uh, it was our first time there. And it just seems like a mecca for just horror fans all over all over Colorado and right, you know, right. yeah. the surrounding yeah. states. Uh, it's probably like, you know, for every filmmaker we met there, we met like 10 to 12 horror fans. So it's just a beautiful thing to see. Yeah, I get invited every year to the Media Fright Fest because they do world premieres of all independent horror movies. And I, and I absolutely love it. And they always invite me back every year as a special guest. And I love it. So um, 
Kyle, I wish you the, nothing but the best in directing in your career. Madeline, I love you. You're awesome. You're Thank my favorite, you so much. <laughs> you're, my, you're, my, you're my favorite character in the Black Phone because you're smart ass attitude. Because I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And I wish you could you could recite one of your lines from the Black Phone, but I know you can't because the way you right. tell, the way you I tell, would if I could. <laughs> I know the way you tell off the cops in that movie. I was like, yes, she is the. I love her. That's like one of my favorite scenes. Are we talking about fart knockers? Was that? Uh... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just wish you could reset a line, but I know you can't. So I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna ask anymore. <laughs> but yes, you stole. You deserve an Oscar for that movie. Just saying. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> and Kyle, I hope you win tons of awards for your movie, Rob. Robbing it right no more. I really do, because I'm thank sure it, it's going to grab the attention of a lot of veterans, a lot of combat vets like me. And I'm sure they're gonna gonna watch it because I'm gonna promote the hell out of this movie when we're done with this interview. So it's well, going to go I all... hope you're pleasantly surprised by the, the twists and turns. That I'm sure I will. I love I love twists and turns. I mean, I love being caught off guard. And usually, um, just by watching your trailer, it does not. It looks like it's unpredictable, which I love. I love movies that are right. unpredictable. So, anyway, I said I hope it grabs the attention a lot of combat vets. That way, they could relate to it. I'm going to send this all my social media platforms. I'm going to tell all my friends, all my combat veteran friends, everyone that I served with. And let's, hey, check out this trailer. You're going to love it. Because I give it a 10 out of 10 because, like I said, the transition was good. The lighting's good. The dialogue sounds phenomenal. And I know you directing it is going to be an awesome movie to watch. Hey, so, it helps having great actors. Huh? It does. <laughs> thank you. It does. So <laughs> thank you two very much for coming on with the show today. I really do appreciate it. And I'm my heart's still beating 10,000 miles a minute here. because Thank you, know, you for having us. <laughs> I, no, it's, it's my honor and my pleasure. So I wish you two nothing but the best in your careers. And I cannot wait to see this movie. And I can't wait to see you more movies, Madeline. Thank and you. Kyle, I hope you do get to direct a lot more movies like this one. I really do. Oh, thank you. Me too. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. And um, yeah, I hope you have a rest of a wonderful evening. Thank you too. Thank you. Likewise. Darling, this is, um, that's hard for me to talk about. We are so happy and grateful that Robbie is back. But I know you've seen it. We all have. He ain't quite the same Robbie that he was. I wish I could explain it all to you, Sarah. I really do. Are you saying Robbie did something bad? I know you got pretty rattled over there, but I didn't know you got, like, wounded. And you uh, put a good boy like Robbie in a bad place. He might bring a piece of that place home with him deep down inside of him. And there is nothing he can do about it. Except learn to live with it. Robbie? I saw it. You know, something else. Robbie. He ain't riding no more.